Chapter 21 Counter Sniper Technology Rise of the Machines Counter Sniper Technology is a relatively new phenomenon. While snipers have existed since the invention of the long musket in the 14th century China, counter sniper technology is in its infancy, only having been around since the early 1990s. One of the events driving the creation of modern counter-sniper technology was the protracted war in Sarajevo. The UN and NATO forces, attempting to enforce various ceasefires in the city, found they could not detect and counter snipers with any measure of effectiveness. Most of the time, no one knew where an incoming bullet originated from. Other times, the perpetrators were long gone by the time a patrol showed up to investigate. Humans were just too easy to deceive. What was needed was a mechanical device that could not be fooled and would immediately recognize a gunshot and determine where it came from. Over recent years, various companies have developed technological solutions to the problem posed by urban snipers. We must keep in mind that none of the current counter-sniper systems we are going to review can actually stop a sniper before they shoot. These systems are designed to quickly and accurately locate a sniper after they have fired a shot. Thus, the information acquired by the machines enables the persons targeted by the sniper to react quickly enough to kill or capture the shooter after the shot is already made. Acoustic Counter Sniper Technology The most commonly used counter sniper systems are those based on acoustical technology. The basic premise of these systems is several acoustic sensors arrayed in different locations in the same general area will detect supersonic bullet shock waves and a weapon's muzzle blast. The acoustic sensors immediately record the sound data from the weapon and feed this information to a computer that determines the trajectory of the bullet and tells the operator from what direction and distance the weapon was fired. Some systems, based on the variations in the sound waves detected, can even determine the caliber of the round fired. Acoustic counter sniper systems are designed in several formats, ground mounted, vehicle mounted, and even mounted on a soldier's kit. In field testing, acoustic systems have detected a gunshot from the waves of the muzzle blast and the shock waves of the supersonic bullet and have accurately determined the caliber of the bullets fired. Furthermore, in the majority of shots made during said testing, acoustic systems did accurately determine the correct azimuth of the shot, the tra correct trajectory and elevation of the shot, and the distance to the shot, all within several degrees of error. Testing revealed it was harder to determine the location of the shooter from muzzle blast alone, especially from a great distance. In contrast, the shock waves emitted along the trajectory of the bullet itself were more reliable. One of the most popular acoustic systems is the Boomerang created by BBN Technologies. BBN has a contract with the U.S. government, and the U.S. military currently uses Boomerang counter sniper systems in Iraq and Afghanistan. BBN said this about their Boomerang system. Boomerang uses passive acoustic detection and computer-based signal processing to locate the shooter. When mounted on a vehicle, the system operates when the vehicle is stationary or moving. Boomerang uses a SMGLE mast-mounted compact array of microphones to detect incoming fire. And Boomerang is the only shooter detector known to operate successful in urban terrain. M-O-U-T, on moving vehicles. Boomerang detects incoming supersonic small arms fire for bullet trajectories passing the mast and for shooters firing at maximum, maximum effective weapons ranges. It detects and reports incoming fire and the relative shooter position, including elevation, quickly. Boomerang indicates the azimuth of incoming small arms fire by actuating a light to show the clock direction and Boomerang announces the direction using a recorded voice. Boomerang indicates the range and elevation on an LED screen display. The lighted displays can be dimmed. Boomerang worked great for the Marines on post when they receive fire from multiple directions and when just a few rounds are fired. Without Boomerang, it is difficult to pinpoint where you're getting shot from in an urban environment because of the echoes of the buildings and within the post. Shot Spotter Gunshot Location System, GLS. Another acoustic gunshot detection system popular with U.S. police forces is the Shot Spotter Gun Location System. 
Shot Spotter uses acoustic detection like BBN's Boomerang, but Shot Spotter is set up with multiple stationary sensor collectors in order to blanket an urban area. When these remote acoustic devices hear what they have identified as a gunshot, they instantly collect the data and send it to a central command center, like a police station. Because the time between the collection of the acoustic data and the notification to the user is so short, police know the exact location a gunshot was fired from in seconds. According to ShotSpotter, ShotSpotter gunshot location system utilizes patented technology to detect weapons fire events over large, complex environments. ShotSpotter products range from systems for public safety agencies and 911 dispatch centers, which instantly identify, locate, and give a visual of the location of a gun event in an urban area, to fully mobile, internet-worked wireless systems for the military that are capable of detecting and locating many types of weapon events in various challenging environments. All ShotSpotter products are built on the same proven ShotSpotter gunshot location system technology, ShotSpotter uses either wired or wireless sensors deployed over areas from one half square mile up to tens of square miles or hundreds of linear miles. For example, 90 miles of interstate were covered in central Ohio during the Columbus, Ohio sniper investigation. Authors note, there has been no evidence presented to date that the Ohio sniper was actually apprehended due to information provided by ShotSpotter. The Ohio sniper was captured when family members provided information to the police about the shootings and provided guns for forensic analysis. The technology can also be used in airports, stadiums, or other public ventures. ShotSpotter utilizes the principle of acoustic triangulation to locate gunfire across wide areas. Because of its patented spatial filter technology, ShotSpotter systems are not fooled by noises which sound like gunfire but are misleading, like car backfires, firecrackers, etc. Similarly, the technology filters out echoes and other acoustical anomalies. Using a continuous feedback loop which constantly adjusts sensor trigger and other parameters, ShotSpotter is able to deliver instantaneous system reports to dispatchers within seconds of a weapon being fired. The unique spatial filter technology makes for a very cost-effective solution. ShotSpotter systems deploy within a, only 8 to 12 sensors per square mile, far fewer than the number required by any other systems. ShotSpotter sensors detect gunfire at a range of 1 to 2 miles away from the sensors, and ShotSpotter systems have been shown to be accurate to within 25 meters over 1 to 2 mile ranges. In addition, ShotSpotter performs real-time spooling of all signals captured at a sensor to support later detailed forensic and intelligence analysts of events. Such information can include other non-weapons events, weapon type and direction of fire analysis, and even information related to the direction and speed of shooters on the move. The biggest drawback with the ShotSpotter when deployed in stationary locations and wired to a central command center is the delay in reaction time by security forces. ShotSpotter may detect a gunshot in a certain part of the city, but if it takes the police 10 minutes to arrive on the scene, the shooter is long gone. What security forces need is the ability to have an instant presence all the sight of a gunshot. But the police cannot be everywhere at once, can they? Again, from ShotSpotter, Joint Forces Command announced in December 2005 that they had conducted a test of unmanned aerial vehicle, gunshot detection, and interoperation capabilities in urban environments as part of a U.S. Marine Corps exercise in Louisiana. One of the primary goals for the experiment involved the testing of the ShotSpotter system, an acoustic locating system that cues a UAV, unmanned aerial vehicle, sensor to locate an enemy when he fires a weapon, whether on a battlefield or in an urban environment said Commander James Joyner, USJFCOM. In field testing, the ShotSpotter wireless system provided improved awareness of the Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance, ISR, data in near real time with less than a 10-second delay, according to Joyner. In addition, the integration of ground-based sensors with UAV sensors made it possible to visualize the shooter's location within seconds. With this method, the ShotSpotter acoustic detection system was paired with UAVs. When ShotSpotter detected a gunshot, the location of the gunshot was transmitted immediately to a UAV loitering somewhere overhead. 
the UAV then looked down on the reported location with its cameras to see what was there all within the space of a few seconds. If shot spotter detected a gunshot at a certain location and a UAV looked at the spot and saw a car speeding away, then the UAV could key in on and follow the car. If the UAV was armed with guided Hellfire missiles, the UAV could target and destroy the car when commanded to do so. While the shot spotter UAV team does not allow for instant coverage, it does allow for near instant coverage and provides a far faster reaction than any roving police patrol could provide. Acoustic Counter Sniper Applications The implications of an effective acoustic counter sniper system like BBN's Boomerang or Shot Spatter are significant. Acoustic sensors determining exactly where a shot was fired from allow security forces to react quickly to a sniper, compensating for their own human failings. The computer does all the work. All the reacting security forces have to do is go where the computer tells them to. In this case, the acoustic system is the battlefield detective, taking the imperfect human response out of the equation. Locating the sniper is important, but so is forensic evidence collected by the acoustic system. To start, the computer recording of the bullet trajectory and shooter location will help recreate the scene of the shooting. The recorded acoustic signatures of the shockwave and muzzle blast could then be used to determine the type of weapon used and the kind of bullet fired. If the suspected sniper's weapon was captured at a later time, the weapon could be test-fired in a controlled environment and its acoustical signature recorded and compared to the existing data. Thus, each weapon would have an acoustic fingerprint. The acoustic fingerprint could then be used as evidence in a court of law to convict suspected snipers. The Sniper's Response to Acoustic Systems Is there any way to defeat these machines, or is the modern-day shooter going to be acoustically detected out of existence? While acoustic counter-sniper systems are the most common, they are also the easiest to defeat. All a sni sniper has to do to defeat a system, depending on hearing a gunshot, is to employ a sound suppressor. With a suppressor, there is no muzzle blast to detect. A system like the Spot Shotter, which is deployed in various positions throughout a city, detects gunshots, not the bullets and visible shockwaves. Consequently, a common sound suppressor purchased on the black market for $100, or a homemade one built for half the price, will defeat a multi-million dollar system like the Shot Spotter. What about systems that detect bullet shockwaves? Defeating these systems is just as easy. All the shooter has to do is use subsonic ammunition that does not break the sound barrier and thus does not emit shockwaves. We discussed before the Russian's excellent VSS Vintered suppressed subsonic sniper rifle that fires such a heavy bullet it is lethal out to 400 meters, despite the bullet never breaking the sound barrier. Subsonic ammunition can be bought legally from scores of manufacturers or hand-loaded by the shooter themselves. The shooter can exploit counter-sniper machines in other ways to take advantage of the fact that acoustic detection systems are susceptible to changes in the weather, temperatures, and humidity. For instance, a sniper firing a shot in extremely hot weather, like that found in the Middle East, with heat waves rising off the urban environment, oven hot pavement, parking lots, roads, and sidewalks, may remain undetected. This is because the super hot environment affects the sound and shock waves of the bullet in such a way that increases the acoustic system's margin of error. The system may detect a gunshot and its supersonic bullet, but it may not be able to pinpoint the exact location the shot was made from. A sniper can defeat attempts to acoustically fingerprint their weapons by deceiving the acoustic system's established templates. Acoustic systems recognize the caliber of weapon fired based on previously recorded noise and shockwave data. In order to throw off the acoustic system, a sniper can handload their own rounds in order to change the ballistic characteristics of their bullets. The sniper could also fire a Sabo round. In this case, a sniper would fire a 5.56mm bullet from a 7.62mm rifle, thus altering the sound and shockwave template already programmed into the acoustic system's computer. Importantly, systems like the Shot Spotter's citywide system only work in a permissive environment where the government and security forces are in control of day-to-day -day life. The shot spotter is ideal in places like America where the police control the city, not the gangs doing the shootings. However, imagine American security forces setting up a citywide shot spotter system in Fallujah or the British in the IRA stronghold of South Arma or the Russians Grozny. As soon as the insurgents located a shot spotter device, which must be camouflaged or hidden to survive, they would destroy them. 
The last gunshots the devices would pick up would be the guerrillas shooting them to pieces. And if the shot spotters all report to a central command post like a police station, what happens when the guerrillas detonate a car bomb in front of the station and collapse the entire structure, destroying the shot spotter command center with it? Having a certain counter sniper technology is not enough. This technology must also be practical and be able to survive in the environments they will be used in. Optics Laser Reflection Technology Acoustic technology may be the most common counter sniper system, but optics laser reflection technology is much less expensive and even strives to be proactive by detecting a sniper before they ever make a shot. With this technology, a handheld device emits an eye safe laser out, of, out to a range of a kilometer and more. When the laser strikes a layered optics like a telescopic sight, it sends a reflection of the diffused laser back to the user, pinpointing the location of the enemy. Just like a traditional laser rangefinder, the device tells the user what the distance is between them and their target. The more sophisticated optics laser reflection devices are even uh, advertised as being able to discriminate between common objects like eyeglasses and can see through smoked glass windows. The sniper's response to optics laser reflection technology. The sniper has several different options for dealing with this threat. First, if the sniper can manipulate the urban terrain so they can make a close shot, around 200 meters or less, then the sniper can defeat laser detection by simply not using a scope. No scope equals no reflection. At absolutely no cost to the shooter, the multi-thousand dollar optics detection devices can be rendered useless before they can even be used. Or the sniper can take a snapshot. With a snapshot, once the sniper sees a target with their naked eye, they raise their weapon from hiding, take aim, acquire the shot, make the shot, and lower their weapon, all in the space of several seconds. In this manner, the optics detection team only has a split second to find and locate the exposed optics, an unlikely prospect in a cluttered urban environment. Other options include the employment of anti-reflection filters on the sniper's scope that effectively block the wavelength of the laser. That way, a laser can hit the scope and never make a reflection, keeping the sniper invisible. If this anti-reflection filter is not available, the sniper can put an extended hood over the end of their scope or attach a honeycomb anti-reflection piece on the glass of the scope. The hooded cover will ensure a laser or any light does not strike the face of the scope from an angle. Unless the detection team is directly opposite the sniper, they will not detect the sniper scope. This technique does not make the sniper invisible, it just makes the counter sniper team's job more difficult. Other options for the sniper include the use of light reflecting or light absorbing materials for concealment. While optics laser reflection devices can see through smoked glass, they can see through extremely dark, heavy window tinting. Can the device see through the mirrored reflective coatings often placed on the windows of office buildings in sun drenched areas of the world? If not, the sniper can use these coatings as a concealment device from laser threats. For example, a sniper could crack open a window covered with a reflective mirrored coating. The sniper would then slide the barrel of their weapon under the window frame so just the muzzle was visible. While the sniper looks through the one-way mirrored window with their scope, the detection team's laser would bounce off the window, never picking up or identifying the sniper's scope. In another instance, a sniper could cut a small opening in the rear window of a car so only the muzzle of their rifle protruded. Then they could hide behind a heavily tinted rear window invisible to the laser while they prepared to take their shot. Since the laser device will pick out all layered optics, it will hone in on rifle scopes, binoculars, telescopes, video cameras, still cameras, glasses, and sunglasses. A sniper can use this knowledge to their advantage by setting up decoy optics in their operational area to saturate it with false alarms. What would a counter sniper team do when their optics laser reflection device picks up a dozen separate hits? Would they send a reaction force to a dozen different locations to check out all the possible threats? By doing this, a sniper could smoke out a counter sniper team by getting them to react to a false alarm. A sniper could use the decoy optics as bait to ambush the counter sniper team when they go forward to investigate the suspicious optics. To take this a step further, an enemy sniper could set up a stuffed dummy with a scope to get the laser armed counter sniper team to take a shot and reveal their location. The tap The tactical options for exploiting the optics laser reflection device are many. Millimeter wave radar technology. 
A step up from the relatively simple acoustic and optics detection systems is millimeter wave radar systems using portable radar units to detect bullets as they fly through the air and then collect the data on the bullet's trajectory, enabling the system to backtrack the bullet to its original source. There are already radar systems in existence that can accurately detect incoming mortar and artillery rounds and then provide a back azimuth to the point of origin. However, the projectiles this radar detects are much larger than a bullet and have a much longer hang time, giving the radar system more time to track the projectile. Attempting to track a bullet, which is an extremely small object, with a traveling time to the target of a second or two at most, is difficult with current technology. Testing shows the average 7.62 bullet, if fired from 500 meters away or less, can be tracked with a high probability of locating the sniper. To date, millimeter wave radar systems are expensive, complicated, and fragile as compared to other systems. Practical sniper radar systems are still years away from production, although several companies are pursuing them. The sniper's response to radar systems. It is difficult to counter a radar system, but certain weaknesses can be exploited. For instance, bullet detecting radar works best when aimed skyward to avoid ground clutter. In response, a sniper could fire at ground level amongst a busy area filled with cars and people, so the radar would be overwhelmed with clutter and unable to detect and identify a single bullet. Natural clutter that can be exploited includes rain, snow, and sandstorms, or a sniper could intentionally fire a small-sized bullet like a 5.56, which has a smaller radar cross-section, making it more difficult for the radar system to pick it up. To cause even more difficulties for a radar system, a sniper could fire a radar absorbing or deflecting round so their bullet would be effectively invisible. I'm not aware of any such bullets on the market today. LIDAR, laser radar technology. The proper term for this technology is really LIDAR, later laser imaging detection and ranging, as opposed to radar, radio detection and ranging. But many people refer to this technology as laser radar. LIDAR works much the same as radar bullet detection technology, except LIDAR does not use radio waves to detect a bullet. It uses light. When a laser hits an object like a bullet, it creates backscatter that is reflected back to and detected by the LIDAR receiver. In this way, the laser radar detects a bullet in flight and then backtracks the azimuth to its point of origin. The sniper's response to laser radar systems. LIDAR systems suffer from the same basic limitations as a radar system, but to a lesser degree. LIDAR is more reliable because the system uses light reflections as opposed to radio reflections to detect a bullet. Laser systems still suffer from urban environmental clutter, but less so. And while radar systems can be jammed, LIDAR systems cannot. A LIDAR detection system, too, can be fooled with a small bullet made from material that does not easily reflect light. A sniper would want, not want to use a shiny, copper-jacketed bullet, for instance. And if intentionally fired amid the clutter of a busy city during rain, snow, or sandstorms. Infrared IR and thermal imaging counter-sniper technology. Some counter-sniper technology employs infrared IR cameras to observe and record the muzzle flash from a weapon. Frequently, the IR camera system is integrated with a visible light camera system to help eliminate false alarms. Companies have even emplaced these IR systems in UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles, which proved successful in identifying ground muzzle flashes from their lofty perches. Like LiDAR and acoustic technology systems, muzzle flash identification technology has the ability to determine the azimuth and elevation of a gunshot, but not the distance. However, the distance to the shooter could be determined by simply analyzing the terrain. IR technology can also detect the thermal signature of a bullet in flight. This is possible because as a bullet flies through the air, it creates friction, and the bullet and the air around the bullet become hotter than the surrounding air. Consequently, as the heated bullet passes through the relatively cooler air, eye sensors looking in the direction of a gunshot can see the heated path of the bullet. By looking at the path of the bullet, the infrared system can backtrack the bullet to the source. IR systems can be used to not only track the bullet's path, but to detect the fire themselves through their body heat. If a sniper's position can be positively identified, then the sniper can be tracked through their body heat signature alone. 
An IR system gives the operator an advantage because it can see through darkness, smoke, clouds of dust, and even walls, depending on the capability of the IR system and the characteristics of the walls. IR technology can even see a sniper's gun barrel as it heats up from firing the bullet and the friction caused by the bullet traveling down the weapon's rifled barrel. The sniper's response to infrared technology. A sniper can defeat infrared detectors in a variety of ways, but it is difficult. Let us look at the problem of IR muzzle flash technology since this is the easiest type of system to defeat. Muzzle flash detection systems are inherently limited because they must see a muzzle flash to work. However, from the reading we have done so far, it is easy to hide a weapon's muzzle flash by using a suppressor or firing from within an enclosed space like the trunk of a car or from a small hole cut out of a wall. Also, muzzle flash technology can be overwhelmed with false alarms in dense urban areas with thousands of random lights flashing on and off in any given area of the city. When it comes to IR systems designed to detect body heat signatures, most systems are incapable of producing pictures of sufficient quality to identify more than an outline of a person. Thus, the thermal imager is unable to determine if a person is reaching for their wallet or grabbing a pistol. It falls upon the sniper to fool the thermal imaging operator by displaying non-threatening body language. Therefore, a sniper would not want to lie down on a deserted roof, a dead giveaway, when they could sit on a balcony in a chair with several people nearby, thus creating a natural and non-hostile posture. IR imaging can be made less effective if there is some sort of screening between the shooter and the IR sensor. A person sitting behind a thick, concrete wall will be harder to detect by an IR sensor than a person in an open field. The person behind the concrete wall will appear to the IR operator as an indistinguishable blob and not an identifiable threat. When it comes to their weapon, a sniper can reduce its thermal image by cooling it, keeping the weapon in a freezer, refrigerator, cooler, cold room, a bag of ice, or by placing cold packs on it before they use it. Since thermal imagers only pick up heat, a cold object is invisible. While a sniper may be able to defeat IR technology searching for their body or weapon heat signature, there is no way for the sniper to fire a cold bullet that does not create friction, and therefore heat, while it flies through the air. The Discovery Channel's Mythbusters show tried firing an ice bullet and found it to be impractical, except at point-blank ranges. One thing to consider when confronted with LiDAR, radar, and IR systems is these counter-sniper systems are most likely not up and running 24 hours a day. Because these systems may be man-portable and thus battery-powered and are expensive and maintenance-intensive, many have to be triggered by a specific event to turn them on. A common means of triggering these more sophisticated systems is with acoustic sensors. With these acoustically triggered systems, only when a gunshot is heard do the other LiDAR, radar, or IR systems switch on. Thus, the sniper comes full circle back to beating an acoustic system to avoid turning on the other more sophisticated counter-sniper systems. Closed Circuit Television Systems, CCTV A common form of technical surveillance used to target criminals is CCTV. CCTV is a system of visible light cameras, IR cameras are also available but less common, networked together that record specific areas of interest. The cameras transfer what they view to a central location where the operators view real-time activity or review the unseen film at a later time. Visible light cameras have their limitations in that they cannot detect a flying bullet because it is too small and is moving too fast for the camera to pick it up. Be this as it is, CCTV is useful for a variety of other tasks like recording the faces, license plates, and movement of criminals as they conduct their operations. As a result, CCTV is generally more useful in post-shooting investigations than as a preventative system. One nation using CCTV on a large scale is Britain, due in part as a reaction to the IRA's bombing campaigns during the Troubles. Law enforcement in Britain use CCTV to deter criminal activity, to view real-time events, and to record actions where the film may be used at a later date for criminal investigations and prosecutions. 
An informal study estimated Britain had approximately 400,000 surveillance cameras positioned throughout the country, with the majority of them focused on public urban areas. This extensive use of surveillance cameras proved useful during the July 7, 2005 London suicide bombings, when four men blew themselves up, killing 52 people and wounding another 700. CCTV captured pictures of the suicide bombers before the attack, which then aided British authorities in identifying the men during the post-bombing investigation. CCTV, used on a massive scale as in Britain, causing problems for any organization conducting illegal activities. In CCTV monitored areas, a sniper will have to observe the surrounding camera system and determine the areas the cameras cover. Consequently, the sniper's first strategy is camera avoidance. If a sniper cannot avoid surveillance, then they will try to avoid being filmed in the act. It is far better to be filmed from afar, walking through a crowded area, than it is to actually get caught pulling the trigger. While extensive CCTV systems make a guerrilla's activities difficult, successful operations are still possible. For example, the IRA still conducted effective operations in London despite the presence of cameras. IRA members hid their identity from cameras by using simple ruses like wearing motorcycle helmets, wigs, ball caps, and sunglasses, so facial recognition software programs would not get them. IRA vehicles used for operations either had fake license plates or the cars were stolen, so cameras taking pictures of a car's license plate for running red lights were rendered useless. While under the surveillance of cameras, IRA men mimicked the normal body language of the people around them so they did not trigger a reaction from the screen watchers. CCTV definitely made the IRA work harder, but they still exploited the reactive nature of the CCTV system to carry out their operations. CCTV systems have other weaknesses. They can be put out of action by cutting their power sources, spray painting their lenses, shooting them out, or blowing up the control room where the cameras are monitored. Automated Robotic Counter Sniper Systems When discussing counter sniper technology, the subject of automated response systems is often brought up. Some have suggested a good counter sniper system would be one that automatically detects an enemy sniper and then returns fire at the sniper, all in a matter of seconds and all based on a computer's artificial intelligence. This is not a good idea for several reasons, but mainly because it removes the human element of judgment from the equation something a computer has yet been able to replicate. An automated sniper system is a flawed one because its automated response would be easy to fool. Just imagine a gor gorilla remotely firing a rifle from a crowded apartment building. Would you want an automated system returning fire into a building filled with innocent people? The goal in this situation is not to return fire at a weapon. The goal is to catch or kill the sniper. But an automated counter sniper system would equate the firing of a weapon to the presence of a sniper when they may be two separate things. Also, the margin of error inherent in any automated system would be easily manipulated by the guerrilla sniper. Since the determination of the location of the sniper is an educated guess, even for a computer, there is no guarantee the automated system would direct its return fire at the right target. A sniper manipulating this margin of error could get a computer to return fire at a location filled with people that is not the sniper's true position. Also of concern in the case in which a guerrilla sniper could overload an automated system with false alarms. How does an acoustically triggered computer differentiate between the noise of a gunshot, a firecracker, and a backfiring car? How does an infrared trigger computer differentiate between a muzzle flash, a light bulb being flashed, and an exploding cherry bomb? How does an optics laser triggered computer differentiate between a rifle scope, a magnifying glass, and a cell phone camera? How does a radar or LIDAR triggered computer differentiate between the bullet fired from a sniper, a marble launched by a 10 year old girl with a slingshot, and a pellet fired by a young boy wielding an air rifle? Computers are unable to distinguish between friend and foe and are unable to make judgment based on nuance and could be tricked into committing automated mass murder. Sniper Detection Technology Without doubt, counter-sniper technology can make life difficult or very short for an unwary sniper. A skilled sniper may be able to defeat one or two of the available counter-sniper systems, but they probably cannot defeat an integrated system employing all of these systems used in combination. A specific area of a city, scoured constantly by acoustic, lidar, and infrared counter-sniper systems, will most likely detect a sniper's shot. Significantly, this counter-sniper technology 
will only be useful in an area where a sniper is expected to operate so the system users know where to direct their machines. After all, a city like Baghdad is a huge area to cover, and finding the right place to employ a counter-sniper system may be akin to finding a needle in a haystack. Of course, the operators of this counter-sniper technology must be aware of the limitations of their equipment. All things mechanical and electrical require regular maintenance and will eventually break down. Also, the equipment is only as good as the people operating it. A human must monitor the equipment every second while it is running. One must keep in mind extreme weather, either very hot or very cold, has a way of degrading the effectiveness of everything mechanical. While companies are striving to make their counter-sniper technology omnidirectional, today's operators still have to point their sensors in the right direction for them to work. The system operators must be concerned if they use electronic jamming equipment to counter cell phones and radio waves used to initiate remote attacks like IEDs because they may jam their own equipment. In turn, these electronically dependent counter sniper systems are themselves vulnerable to jamming. The sniper's response to sniper detection technology. The most salient limitation of sniper detection technology is its reactive nature. The systems only detect a sniper that they have taken their shot, except for the optical laser reflection systems, and they cannot ensure the optics they detect are being used by a sniper. However, there are several situations where detecting the location of a sniper is irrelevant. For example, Chechen snipers in Gro Grozny routinely fought it out with Russian soldiers even after their positions were revealed. These sniper martyrs did not care the Russians knew where they were since they were going to kill as many Russians as they could until they were killed themselves. Locating a sniper only works if the sniper cares about being located. On a variation of the above tactic, a sniper can intentionally fire a shot with the understanding a counter sniper system will detect them to lure security forces into an ambush. If security forces are fond of using helicopters to react to and destroy a suspected sniper position, Guerrillas can be waiting with shoulder-launched anti-aircraft missiles for the express purpose of shooting down their responding aircraft, or guerrillas can rig a building with explosives and wait for security forces to surround and enter the building to search for the sniper. Once the security forces begin their search of the building, the guerrillas blow up the entire structure and collapse it with everyone inside. If the sniper exploits the basic fundamentals of urban guerrilla warfare and fires from amidst a crowded area, then security forces may be incapable of responding with force because they will kill innocent people in the process. Security forces will then have to surround and search the area in hopes of finding the culprit. However, all the sniper ha then has to do is get rid of their rifle before security forces arrive, so there is no physically incriminating evidence linking them to the shooting. Once again, detecting where the shot came from becomes irrelevant. A sniper can also make detection irrelevant by employing a remotely fired weapon. In this case, a sniper sets up a rifle fired any number of remote ways, via cell phone, pager, garage door opener, etc. After the sniper fires the weapon, security forces respond to the scene of the shooting only to find an empty car or a deserted room and no actual person. We should keep in mind if the weapon can be fired remotely, an explosive device placed on or near the weapon can also be remotely triggered when security forces arrive on the scene. If a sniper wants to make a clean getaway after detection, all they have to do is apply the fundamentals of urban guerrilla sniping. Since all counter sniper systems have a certain margin of error, the sniper can exploit these seams in the system. For instance, a sniper could select a firing position in line with several other firing positions. Consequently, when the counter sniper system backtracks the bullet's trajectory, the system operator realizes the shot could have come from any number of positions because of the machine's margin of error. If the sniper cannot defeat the counter sniper system, then perhaps they can defeat their enemy's ability to react. If a sniper fires from the trunk of a car and a counter sniper system detects the exact location of the car, this information can be made irrelevant. As soon as the sniper fires, the car drives off with the sniper in it. When the reaction force arrives only minutes later at the exact location where the machine told them to go, the sniper is long gone. In a scenario such as this, a good escape plan trumps the counter sniper's ability to detect where the shot came from. If a sniper is aware their enemy is using counter sniper systems, they can use this knowledge to their advantage and incorporate it into their reconnaissance of their target. Since the sniper is on the alert for possible counter sniper technology, they can scan the terrain for acoustic sensors and infrared cameras just as they search for police checkpoints and other security measures before they make their shot. 
If a sniper detects a counter-sniper system, they can make the decision to work somewhere else. In such a situation, the counter-sniper system would have worked because it made the sniper move to an area less secure. Or if the sniper wants to be a little more aggressive, they can locate and shoot the system itself. Along the same line, the sniper can target the operator manning the counter-sniper system. Just as snipers intentionally target officers and radio men, they can now put counter-sniper operators at the top of their lists.